Ah, yeah, moss. Um, do you guys carry boots? No, not like the, the shift brake and e-brake boots. You do? Okay. Alcantara? With red accents? Will that make me faster? No, d doesn't matter. Um, yeah, send him over. That sounds perfect. Cheers. What is up, Internet? Welcome back to the Flywheel Films Garage. Doing another big modification today, and by big I mean actually pretty small, but I am super excited about it. Thanks to my friends at Moss, I have a suede shift boot and e-brake, or handbrake boot, uh, to install to replace the kind of dingy looking leather ones. I get it, leather is supposed to be premium and nice, but honestly, race car spec, right? And as a bonus, I will be adjusting for the third time my shifter turret. Uh, in case you somehow missed it, I did an installation of the Cobalt Short Throw Shifter Kit. I'm still using it and still loving it. However, when I first installed it, it was really hard and notchy, uh, like more than it should be, I think. And so I did another video following up fixing it. I used essentially a cardboard spacer, which is pretty simple, honestly, but it actually did help a lot. But big shout out to the engineers at Cobalt that actually reached out to me and said, hey, we may have a fix in mind. Um, and there's a long story behind that and I'll show you some of the like diagrams and stuff, but basically the NC1 I think is what they truly designed it with. And the NC2 slash NC3 actually has just a slight difference in its shifter. Um, it's like so minor. I know Mazda did officially announce transmission improvements, but like it was never called out as separate pieces or anything. So. It's just ever so slight differences in the machining and I guess the final workmanship or craftsmanship, whatever, just enough to where certain parts on NC1s and NC2s may not be fully seamlessly interchangeable. So I'll be addressing that. I will be installing shift boot, handbrake boot, having a blast, sprucing up the interior. It's just another good old day in the garage. Let's get right to it. I love mail. Well, this should be a pretty simple unboxing. E-brake boot, shift boot, suede with black and red stitching. I'm stoked. As you can already tell, I have removed the center console. I've done this in a few videos before, and it's actually quite simple. Um, once you <laughs> take off this plastic piece back here with like a flathead screwdriver, there's two uh, Phillips screws, one Phillips screw inside the little storage area right there, and the whole thing just pulls up. There's switches you have to undo for the windshield controls. It's really honestly pretty simple, um, but I have documented that pretty thoroughly and it's it's pretty well documented out there. So took that out to provide easier access to the shifter turret area. Uh, I need to get those bolts off and then also to have access to these pieces. Now, this actually pops right off just like this. And in the second here, we'll actually take this apart and I'll show you how to install the actual e-brake boot. And then this one, same situation. Now to take this off, it's just those four bolts initially. But guess what? Thanks to my friend, Jeff, big shout out to Jeff. He got really tired of watching me struggle with bolts on the channel. So he made my life easier, got me one of these. Power tools. I'm basically Tim Taylor. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Note to self, the shifter is still pretty hot. I got home over an hour ago from a eh, roughly 40 minute drive and it's still pretty toasty. So might let that sit for a second. 
But since it is now sitting out kind of in the elements, that should cool off a bit faster, which means I will switch gears and start changing out these stupid boots. Just look how cheap this looks. So for lack of a better solution, I'm just gonna use the back of my car as a workbench. Uh, throw a towel down for protecting my pretty crappy paints. Now it looks terrible. Uh, anyway, I'm just gonna start with this one because it's already free floating essentially. Just need a Phillips screwdriver to pull the leather off, I think. And just so I remember, the tab, yes, the tab goes towards the front. So that's what I'll remember because the slight difference in shape between the front and the rear. So that looks good. Next are all of these little tabs. So you basically pull them forward or I guess outwards and that will free the plastic piece from the rest of it, just like that. And then this should be free to slide over all the tabs. There's just little holes for everything. Like you don't want to rip the leather because you might want to reinstall it or sell it or give it to someone who wants a leather shifter or a different color than what their Miata may have come with. Grab the new one, which is all perfect in its packaging. Ugh, smells good too. Never thought I'd smell it, but I did. So the handbrake is all done. Feels superb. I mean, feels premium, looks premium. Got the nice little red stitching accents. And I just have a bunch of really subtle red accents in my car, so. Maybe we'll just keep adding more. I do would I would love to get an Alcantara wrapped wheel at some point with red stitching, so someday. But yeah, fit back on really nicely, nice and snug. Um, there are a couple holes, especially where the screws go in, that you might want to like push a little bit hard to get it to fit in, but no big deal. Fits perfectly, looks perfectly. And uh, yeah, here's kind of a comparison. I'll show you at the end as well, but on to the next one. So on the underside of the center console, once you get it pulled up, you gotta take out these four screws. And this outer plastic ring just pulls off the silver one. That can be, actually you could plastic it that if you want a different color, fun fact. Throw that over there. And then these, same type of situation. It is super dusty and dirty, which makes sense because that's where all the dust kept, uh, settles. But just pull it off these little tabs here. And this came off a bit easier. So the new one should go on a bit easier, I expect. It's a great time to clean the plastic ring that goes around the shifter, by the way. Really, it's a great time to clean all these parts. There we go. That looks fantastic too. If the shift knob doesn't cover up this little thread, I can cut that, but this looks, oh, fantastic. Dang. Now, on the underside, um, the holes all lined up except for two holes, I guess on the passenger rear kind of area. The other six all lined up. The fact that this is between two plates and screwed in makes me think it will all be fine. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere, um, but I can always keep, a, keep an eye on that. And if it turns out that it does ever slip, I can always cut another hole and get that secured with the actual factory anchors. But I don't think I'll be needing those. So we'll find out, um, you know, trial and error. That's how I do things around here. But um, yeah, that's, that's it. There's that. Sits in pretty with this. And, oh man, I am liking this. Now converting my attention to this because it has just cooled off as of a moment ago. 
I'm gonna pull this off here. This is the new reverse lockout plate that I use, which seems to be holding up nicely. And this. Now that I've pulled this off, I will explain some of the fix possibilities um, that Cobalt has used to address some customer concerns. Um, but basically inside here is a crush washer underneath this um, bushing thing. The plastic bushing is an actual crush washer. You can remove that. That could result in a few like added harmonics um, and maybe a bit more noise, but that would alleviate some of the pressure that's on the actual um, piece there. Another option is to actually remove this lower bushing down here that this sits on and shave off some of the bottom with some sandpaper or like a belt sander or something like that. Those are two kind of official fix options. Um, so inside this thing here, we have these that hold everything kind of in place and I'm going to gradually undo it. There we go. I'm not gonna take it all the way out, I'm just gonna leave it in there. And pop out one of these pushing things. So apparently Cobalt says to remove this. I feel like I'm performing surgery. Remove that. This is a little gasket. Yep. A little gasket. And then put this back in. Everything fits very precisely. Yeah. <laughs> This is how we do it in Japan. <laughs> Might be easier with this tool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there we go. There we go, nice. All right, tighten these back in. All right, so pulling out my perfectly machined piece of cardboard and gonna try out their basically official uh, recommendation. So got that crush washer thing removed. I'm gonna put this back on here. How does this go? What am I, I had it upside down. <laughs> that would have been really funny. <laughs> oh, I don't have to screw this in anymore. I have this. Power. All right, got it put back together. Feels honestly way better. No cardboard even needed. I don't know, you try it. Good. That is super short. Insanely short. Notchy and short. Yep. So, gonna run that for a while and uh, see how it feels. But everything's tightened down. It's amazing what that little tiny washer did, removing it from the space uh, down in there. So, still feels good. Uh, has just the normal amount of play. Um, so I guess I'll reassemble it and see how the boots look. We like a little bit of play. <laughs> All just fun. A bit. This is a little bit of fun, but we we just took it on a test drive to make sure everything you know didn't explode. And it's amazing how much noise comes from in here. So we'll see driving uh, how much noise it makes because Cobalt warned me if I remove that washer, it might make a bit more noise or harmonics or something. I didn't really notice anything different. It's just a loud car, so we'll see. But. <laughs> Looking absolutely fabulous. So this is a German car, and uh, Luke also just put a short throw shifter in this thing. How was that for you? Well, it's a very finely engineered German automobile. So it took me like three times the time that it would take you, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks sick. <laughs> it does look sick. Luke, thanks for your help. I know you just stood there and watched like a construction worker, but. Uh. <laughs> Hourly for it. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching so much. It was really quite simple and it's amazing how much this little tiny thing did. So to recap, took this out. Didn't even use my uh, cardboard. I will retain my cardboard and if anyone wants my cardboard, let me know. I'll sell to the highest bidder. Um, but that's literally everything. It's perfect. The boots look good. It shifts nicely. 
Um, very notchy. I mean, that's just the Cobalt Short Throw Shifter in a nutshell. But thanks, Moss, for these parts. And uh, looking forward to doing more Alcantara in the cockpit. So let me know if you have any Alcantara, any recommendations, for sure looking at a steering wheel at some point. And um, yeah, the products are all linked below. And we'll see you in another video very soon. Cheers.